It's Wednesday. You know what that means. Time for the Southern California Writers Association Hump Day Book Tour. I'm Maddie Margarita here with Diana Pardee on tech. Every Wednesday at 10 a.m., the Southern California Writers Association turns our Facebook page over to a new writer to talk about their book and their writing. Today, I am thrilled to welcome Patricia Smiley. Uh, Patty is the Los Angeles Times bestselling author of four novels about amateur sleuth, uh, Tucker Sinclair. Smiley's Pacific Homicide series features LAPD homicide detective Davey Richards and is based on her 15 years as a volunteer and a special reserve officer for the Los Angeles Police Department. Welcome, Patty. Thank you. So great to be here. Appreciate it. So I, I can honestly say um, we don't get to interview a lot of people uh, who have been reserve police officers. <laughs> so uh, so why, why can you tell us, why don't you tell us a little bit about that and then how that led into you writing Davy Richards and we'll talk about her as a character. Okay, well, it's a, a crazy story, but in the LAPD, they have uh, senior lead officers who act as liaisons to every community in Los Angeles. And so I went to a, um, a neighborhood watch meeting where our senior lead officer was there and she needed somebody to write a or do a flyer for a neighborhood cleanup. And I volunteered because I was playing around with desktop publishing and I created this flyer and it was so, it was really cute and she loved it and blah, blah, blah. And she said, you know, we really need people like you to work at the station. And I said, you do? <laughs> what would you possibly need me for? Anyway, so um, I thought about it, but then I was writing my first Tucker book, False Prophets, and I needed a, um, I needed to write, a, or I wanted to write a scene in a police department, but I had never been in one before. That's a good thing, right? Yes, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought about what she'd said to me, the senior lead officer, and so I applied to their volunteer program. And a year later, I got in and I started, you know, sweeping the floor and, and you know, recording phone messages and stuff like that. And I did that for a long time and, and until um, the LAPD was put under the fed, a federal consent decree and they needed to, I worked in community relations to start and they needed somebody to set up meetings and press releases and make a list of all media because they were required to bring in people to communicate with them. So I did that and they thought, whoa, that's pretty good. And then a sergeant who worked nearby caught wind of what I was doing. And he went to a friend of his and he said, who was a detective out at the airport. And he said, you know, they got this volunteer here. She's, she's pretty smart. You, you really should, you really should, you know, find some way to use her. So that's how I got into working with detectives. And then the sergeant said, you should apply to be a federal, I mean, a specialist reserve officer. And I said, okay, what's that? <laughs> and so yeah. he, he said, it's a glorified volunteer, but you could do more stuff than you're doing now. But eventually it just, you know, sort of morphed into, I was working on the burglary desk with this detective and he was giving me cases and I was writing search warrants and I was, you know, presenting cases to the DA's office. It was just an incredible experience. It was a lot of fun. So, so you did that. So we see that you have um, a fascination with uh, all things investigative. So how did, how did that link to you writing your first book? Um, that was Pacific Homicide, right? That was the first Davy Richards? Yes. Yeah. Well, so. I, you know, for a long time, I didn't want to write a, anything about the police because I didn't want it to betray any confidences and I didn't want to disappoint the people that I worked with because I truly loved them. They were some of the best people I've ever known. But after a while, I thought, well, what the heck? I'm going to just start writing this and, um, you know, it'll probably never get published and that's okay. So I did start writing it and it, it's based on exp experiences and the, the, the center of that story is about a woman's body that was found in a rotating grinder at Hyperion sewage treatment plant. That's a real case. I it was unsolved, but I looked at the murder book and I saw the photos. They were pretty gruesome, and I thought, okay, that's how I'm going to start. That's that's going to be the focus of this book. And uh, and so 
that's what I did. And finally, um, I finished it. And this is kind of a poignant story, but I don't want to make you sad. But my mother, um, I went to visit my mother, who was, you know, pretty elderly and in failing health. And the, the night I, I visited her, I, I walked out the door and she said, you know, that book you wrote, that deserves to be published. And I said, oh, mom, you haven't even read it. And she said, no, it did. It does deserve to be published. And I thought, oh, how sweet. And then she died the next morning. And so I took that kind of as a sign, you know, that I really should try to get it published. And so I did. Wow. So it's interesting that series you wrote before that was published before was uh, about a management consultant. So now uh, who solves crimes and has a different um, tenor to it. And now, so now we're talking about Davy Richards, who's a female detective, right? And you yes. wrote three books about her and her escapades as a detective, less humorous than Tucker's in, in, case, in cases. So where did the um, character of Davy Richards come from? Well, tell us about her and where she came from. Well, first of all, Davy Richards is a second generation LAPD detective. Her parents divorced when she was a teenager, 15, and she went to live with her dad. So she was basically raised by an LAPD gang uh, detective. So she's a petite woman, red hair, um, very serious about crime solving. She's always wanted to be a detective by her, like her dad. And um, she's to make, to compensate for her size, her small size, she's a crack shot. And she, she's won the Distinguished um, Expert Marksman Award with the LAPD, but she's, she's very, um, she has a lot of the characteristics of the detectives that I knew. She believes that crimes are solved often by minutia, by hard work, forensics, okay, good, but mostly by hard work, by you know, pounding the pavement, by small things that other people don't notice. And that's how she solves crimes. And, um, and she's always loved the job. Now her dad has always cautioned her, you can love the job, but the job will never love you. Mm. And it took her a long time in that book, in Pacific Homicide, to realize how true that was. She still loves what she does, but she has, she learns a, a certain amount of distrust for department, the department brass. So, um, so, so she's a different person in um, the second, uh, um, <laughs> sorry, the second goodbye, right? She's a, from, she, from that first book. In yes, book she's, three, she's different. She's learned a lot. Now, the second book, which is called Outside the Wire, um, you know, that was interesting because usually when I start a book, I have an idea, a core of an idea of what I want to talk about. And in that second book, I wanted to talk about Vietnam. And I didn't know at first how that was going to manifest itself, but, but I did. It finally just came to me. But in that second book, what started it is she, um, there was an officer involved shooting with Davy in Pacific Homicide. And in the beginning of Outside the Wire, she's still tortured by that. And in the LAPD, if you're involved in something like that, they make you see a shrink. And so she's seeing this mandatory, you know, appointments with a shrink. And so that evolves. By the second goodbye, um, she's learned a lot. And in Pacific Homicide, she's just only been a detective for a year. And in the second goodbye, she's a lot more... Um, you know, suspicious and wary and careful and not too careful though. She's never careful. She, she goes to far extents to solve a crime because she feels like a lot of detectives that, you know, she's the only one that represents the victim. She's, she's there for the victim to solve the crime. And uh, so she takes that very seriously. You know, I think one of the things I noticed when I um, read that uh, book is that you really get to see some of the emotional um, twists and turns of what it's like to be um, a detective and how her approach is different. And she is motivated. I mean, she is, like you said, she will go to great lengths 
to solve any crime. Why, why do you think that is? Is it her upbringing or what is it about her that makes her different from the other detectives around her? It, it is her upbringing. I mean, she was raised in the, pardon me. She was raised uh, by a, a detective. And, but it's more than that. You know, almost every detective that I have known and had a close personal relationship, they all feel this way. Some of them are serious, some of them are funny, some of them are real you know, practical jokers, but they all have this, you know, you have a deep drive to, to right wrongs and to solve these cases. And, you know, being a homicide detective is not for everybody. Somebody, some people just can't hack it because, especially if you have a family and small children or what, because when, you, when the murder happens, you have to be available. You work 24 hours a day without eating or drinking or going home, or you, there's a cot in the station, you sleep there, you're out following clues because it is true that if you, you, most, if you don't solve or get a suspect in the first 24, 48 hours, it, it's more difficult. So you have to have a certain kind of passion in order to do that. And it's just, it's common. Um, it's a very common um, trait among detectives that I know. And you know, a lot of people who write police detective novels and who don't know police and detectives don't understand how it wears on you. And that cops are people too. They, they have emotional uh, reactions to these things. Pain, you know, it's painful to see this, of course, you know, they have to maintain their equilibrium, but sometimes it's hard to do that when you see something that's horrible like that. So well, I, I think, and I, I do think that we see that in your books, maybe more so than, uh, you know, it's not just all crime and plot, which, which are there, but there's, it's that plus more. Um, so, all right. So be, we, these are short, uh, a short period of time we're together. So I have happen to know that you have finished uh, a manuscript um, but we don't know much about that other than it's finished are you at liberty to talk about what that is or yes okay. um so I, I you know Tucker was an amateur sleuth then I went to professional cops and now I'm back to the amateur sleuth it's sort of a it's sort of a combination between the two um and for this one, I created, I've always written, all my books are set in LA because I live here and I know the city and I love the city and I, I love its quirks. But for this one, I created a totally fictional town in, on the coast of Northern California. And here's a map. Oh. <laughs> oh, anyway, um, and so it, the protagonist again is all my protagonists are based on all the women friends that I have. She's strong, she's funny, she's accomplished. And she's drawn to this site because her beloved aunt has died and she is the executrix of the estate. So she's drawn to this town. And it's funny, it's got a, it's got a wonderful love story in it. It's got intrigue and suspense and all good stuff. I really love the characters. There's a lot of quirky characters in here, and I just, I, I mean, I love them. I've had so much fun writing this book, and I've just finished the first draft, and of course, as we all know, there's lots more work to do, but I'm, this is my favorite phase. Creation is hard. Editing is easy. I love editing, so I'm ready to dig right in and polish it up. Well, uh, we are excited uh, to get our hands on that. We, meaning the Imperial We, I am excited. <laughs> to get my hands on that. I know everybody out there who appreciates mysteries with great characters and plots should be excited that it's gonna be out there. Um, so that's, the, that's on the burner now. So where can people find your books now? The Davy Richards, and then if you're looking for something a little lighter, you have your uh, False Prophets series, right? With right. the teacher who's the management consultant. So, right. so where can people find your books? They're all on um, Kindle at mm -hmm. Amazon. And the, um, the uh, Pacific Homicide series is uh, also on audio, narrated by the famous, wonderful actor, writer, whatever, Wonder Woman, Harley Jane Kozak. And she really did a fabulous job. She really got my characters and and the tone of the uh, books. 
She's wonderful. So yes, audiobooks, Kindle, ebooks. Ebooks. Okay. All right. Well, great. Good luck, Patty. Stay safe. Thank hey. you for being with us here today. Um, uh, everybody, if you enjoyed our event, uh, hopefully you did. Um, you can maybe stay, uh, put some comments in our Facebook section and Patty's going to be checking back in there. So if you have comments or questions, please feel free to leave them there. Uh, if you uh, like bookshots like this, you can join us every Wednesday morning, or you can go to our YouTube channel uh, at SCWA Writers Online for events like this and other writing events. So until next time, everybody, please stay safe, and we will see you soon. Bye. Thank you.